Hey guys, this is for CC week nine, 10 whistle. We are on our third week of 10 whistle and I hope you guys have been having fun so far. Week seven, we kind of did an introduction. Week eight, we you know had fun with the dynamics. So we've been kind of staying on the surface and week nine, it's gonna get a little meatier and um, just more like chunks of, of music theory. And um, this is typically the week when people start getting a little confused or I lose them all together. So, but I will help you through it. It's really not that hard. Um, and again, this is not, I mean, if you majored in music, then you're obviously not watching this video probably. I'm just going to help you teach it to your class, not really give you a music lesson. So, <laughs> all right, so always start off your class with your 10 whistle expectations. Whatever you've been having them do, or maybe that's not working for you and you wanna change it, I have mine put them the 10 whistle on the table in front of them and they are not to, to touch that. Some people have it two hands and their lap if, you're, if your class can handle that, or maybe even like behind their back. Whatever, whatever's been working for you, just do that. Go over that. And then also, I like to review in the beginning. You don't have to do that. You could save it to the end or just not review at all if you don't want. But um, I really like to review in the beginning to kind of recap on what we've been doing, get their mind in the tin whistle mode. So I'll start off with pointing to my different parts of the tin whistle. We can name that. And then we can also go over the dynamics again because that was really fun. My class had a lot of fun with that. And then we'll get into the lesson for week nine. So I'm gonna let you know, I'm going to cover everything in the lesson. However, I'm not gonna teach it to my class in the order as we read it on the page. It's a little too confusing. So I'm gonna start off with the naming portion where we sing the cycle song and we introduce the staff. And then you'll see that on expressing, which is next on the page, it has them playing their tin whistle and for the correct amount of beats of each note, <laughs> but we haven't introduced it yet. So I'm gonna skip this part when I'm in class and go straight to the attending where we're teaching um, the different notes and how long they're held for. So I'm gonna do that first and then in class and then I'm gonna come back to the expressing. So nobody panic, I'm gonna skip that part and, and come back to it and that makes more sense to me, but feel free to do it in this order if you would like. So for the naming portion, they want you to sing the cycle song together as a class and then they want you to point out and see if anybody can notice, or it, maybe if you have four-year-olds, you just have to tell them and show it to them and sing it again, that some notes are held longer than others. So for example, twinkle, twinkle, little star, twinkle, twinkle, little star, it's held longer, star is held longer. So that's the answer. <laughs> and um, then they want you to talk about, even though we're not doing note names this week, we'll do that later, they want you to say that, um, just like we use ABCs to write words and sentences, you know, for the English language, we also use ABCs to write music. But we'll talk about note names in a different week. So if you forget that part, don't panic. We're gonna introduce that in a later week. And then identify the staff. So you could do this a number of ways. You could point to it on the cycle song, these five lines right here. CC has also provided for you on page 103, empty blank staff lines. So you could point to it, but I always teach mine how to draw it because I really think that's so important that they can draw it. They know how to draw it, they can do it. They can go home, write music if they want. Maybe they won't, but still, I can dream. All right, so what I do first is I draw a rectangle on this wobbly board. I'm just gonna go quickly. You can take your time in class and you'll probably have a board that's not so wobbly. So I make a rectangle and then I cut that in half. So I go ahead and go down the middle. That is terrible. And now you have two rectangles, so then I just cut those both in half. Here, one here. So you can take your time in class and do a better job, but for the sake of time, I've gotta keep moving. So now we have our five lines. One, two, three, four, five. And then later, we'll, when we introduce note names, we'll talk about how these are lines and these are spaces. So these are the spaces in between. So this is a staff, it has five lines. Draw it for them if you would like, you don't have to. I think it's so important for them to see how to draw one. And um, you can also point it, point it out on this if you wanna make copies for your class. So moving on, again, I'm skipping the expressing portion and I'm going to page 95 on attending. At the top, you'll see the treble clefs, but that's not introduced until down here at the bottom. I'll show you how to draw one. And um, so let's go ahead to, it says distribute copies of blank staff paper. When I am teaching this, I just have all eyes on me. I do it on my board 
And then when we're done with the entire lesson, then I help them do it themselves. And I'm not gonna distribute the staff paper, I'm just gonna have them draw a staff. So it's very classical, they're doing it over and over and they're gonna learn how to do it themselves rather than just staring at one. But um, you could do that. You could distribute the copy paper, you could just copy the, the staffs on page 103, or um, you could have them draw it, you could do it you know, while you're teaching your lesson or at the end, but I just saved mine for the end. I just go over that at the end. So first one, whole note, it is held for four counts, four beats, however you wanna say it. And it just looks like this, it's like an empty circle. And that is for four beats and that could go anywhere on here really. You could just put one on your staff if you'd like. So that's held for four beats. And this is the way I teach it, I don't do it. So Cece is wanting you to just go, Ta like that to teach it, that it's for four beats. I don't find that my students have a connection that way. So I teach it the way that I learned it in all my years of music. So I just start it off, I say one, two, ready, play, and I keep the rhythm going, and then I just sing for four claps. If that, I'm just trying to help you teach it to your class. So um, it's four beats, but just do it for four claps like that. So it would look like this. One, two, ready, play. Ta. And then I stop. That way they see that the rhythm that we're gonna learn about next week is continuing to move on. And I am just singing for four beats. Okay, does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Then the next one is a half note. So it'll look like a whole note, but it has a stem on it. That's what that line is called. So that would look like this. Depending on where it is, it can also go down too, like that. And that is two, so I'll put one up here on the staff somewhere, like that. That's for two beats. So the half note, if I'm introducing it the way I like to, I would say one, two, ready, play. Ah, just like that. So they can see it's two beats half of what the whole note's getting. Okay, the next one is a quarter note. I know that's confusing. We think quarter, we think four, but um, it's just getting what it's for one beat. It's a quarter of the whole note. That makes sense. So um, that one's the same, just filled in, and the stem could go up or down. Draw either way that you want. So it's just filled in right here. That's gonna get one beat. I'll put one like right here, I guess. Put it on that staff. Okay. So, I introduce that one. One, two, ready, play. Ah. Just one. One clap, one beat. Then we have the eighth note, and this is where people get a little confused. <laughs> so the eighth note, when it's by itself, it's just like that quarter note, where you have that filled in. You have the stem, and then you add a little flag like that. If you're drawing two together, you could do it like this, and then they're connected. So that's two eighth notes. So for the eighth note, they are just getting half a beat. And people are like, how do you do half a beat? That's easy. So I, again, I'm not gonna teach you a music class. This is the best way for you to explain it to your class. If you wanna look into it more and study this a little bit more, go for it. I encourage you to do that. So for what you're going to say to your class is that it's for half a beat. What I'm going to tell you, just tutor to tutor, is in order to teach that to them and move on, because I know a lot of people that watch these videos, they're very nervous, they don't really wanna get in to more than what the lesson provides, so just tutor to tutor, don't say this to your class, but um, when you're clapping, go on the upbeat. Just sing it for only the upbeat. Does that make sense? So this is down, up, down. That was like a whole, like a whole beat. An eighth note only gets half of that. So you're not even going to be an entire clap, if you will. Like a quarter note would be like, ah, but an eighth note is going to be, ah, like that. Just half. That's all you got to do. So if you're teaching that to your class, when your hands are separated, then just do a quick note to teach that to your class. If you want to learn more about eighth notes, then you can go Look online, okay? All right, so that's this is how it would look. One, two, ready, play. 
Ba, ba, ba. See, I'm just doing it really quick when my hands are separated so that you're teaching them that it's like half of a beat. You don't need to tell them all of that. I'm just telling you. So just tell them an eighth note gets half of a beat. So two eighth notes would be the same as a quarter note. Doing math today. All right. So where my eraser went. So now we would have this all on our board. If you have a bigger board, I'm gonna make mine much bigger because I have a much bigger board. I'm gonna leave space over here to draw a treble clef. Um, that's the last thing on this page before we get to expressing. So let me erase this. I'll teach you how to draw a staff again. So again, I do a rectangle. quickly cut that in half cut those two rectangles in half again I'm moving quickly all right so they want you to teach them how to draw a treble clef so there's two different clefs there's a bass clef and a treble clef so the bass clef is for those like deeper lower notes tin whistle doesn't play on a bass clef so you need something like a tuba or trombone that's going to play on a bass clef real really low um woodwinds like clarinets flutes tin whistles we're all in the treble clef up high so to draw a treble clef I don't think it has the instructions in here. I'll just show you. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down below this bottom line, make a dot like this, and then we're gonna kind of make like a J going up. Okay, then we're gonna do a backwards S. So we're, and then we're gonna loop it around these bottom notes right here. So like that. I'll show you again. I'm not very good at drawing, but you get the point. And I'm trying to move fast. So make our little dot down here. Then we do our J up to the top, okay? Then we do our backwards S like this. Wrap around those two bottom ones. You get the gist of it. So that's how we do it. You can rewind if you need to look at it again. So you, sh you show them how to draw the treble clef. Now we can flip back to page 94 and go over expressing. So again, go over proper hand position. We want the left hand on top, the right hand on the bottom. We don't want elbows up on the table like this because then they're playing like this. That's bad airway. Um, so we want it at a 45 degree angle, just like this. And they want you to play a note. Again, if you're in the master's class, maybe you can make it through the scale. Maybe you can make it through Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, whatever you want to do. But um, right now they just want you to drill like each note. Maybe your class can only, they're little and they can only play a B. That's fine. We just want to drill the fact that we're playing a whole note half note, quarter note, and eighth note. So just run through that. So um, let's say for a D, count the students in and have them play a whole note three times. Okay, so that would look like this. One, two, ready, play. Okay, that might be really stressful. So if you have four-year-olds, maybe just have them do it one time. That might be too hard to Keep them having, you know, have a rhythm and play four whole notes. So I think if you have four-year-old, you, you can just judge your class. Maybe do it one whole note, two whole notes. But for the book, uh, maybe for like masters and journeymen, you could probably try to teach them to do three of them. And then let's see. Oh, let's do one of the half notes. So play a half note as they play each note. Ta, ta, like that. So, all right. So it'd be one, two, ready, play. And that's how short it is, just two beats. And clap really loud, like keep the rhythm for them. You don't need to be playing with them. You need to be keeping the rhythm for them. And then a quarter note, it says three times. For the sake of time, I'm just gonna do like what I'm gonna do with my four-year-olds and just have them do it once. And then you can cut them off and start them again and say, okay, let's do another, let's do a quarter note again. I don't think, you know, for the really, really little classes, they're gonna be able to count that in their head and do three quarter notes. But, um, all right, so quarter note, one, two, ready, play. So that would be three quarter notes that I just played. And then for the eighth note, again, on the upbeat, okay? So they wanna play eighth note three times. Okay, one, two, ready, play. Just real short like that on the upbeat every time boom 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 like that i hope that that makes sense so then you can go through you can maybe do like an a go through it again if you want just totally you can judge your class if it took a lot of time to get through 
all the notes playing a D or a B and you're just you're done you're running out of time then move on you drilled it and you can move on um, master's class they might have a lot of fun going through the scale drilling those whole notes half notes quarter notes eighth notes and then um, so at the very very end I'm just going to um, I'm gonna distribute blank pieces of paper. You could do the, the staff paper if you want to, but mine are gonna get a blank piece of paper. I'm gonna erase my board and I'm gonna start over. And I'm gonna say, okay, this is how we draw a staff. And I'm gonna walk them through it step by step. To draw your rectangle. Then cut that in half, cut those two in half. And then I'm gonna show them again how to do the treble clef, let them do it. And then I'm just gonna go step by step. Okay, so now we're gonna draw a whole note. It looks like this. How many beats does it get for? Um, and just go through each one like that so that we're reviewing, they're drawing it, they're doing it. And that's pretty much it. I really hope that this helps. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. It makes sense in my brain and I'm trying to communicate that to you guys. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to you. So I hope I wasn't too confusing. And at the end of the day, just have fun. They're being exposed to music. They're being exposed to vocabulary and that's what's most important. So, all right guys, have fun.